We have Lachelle Yates with the Better Business Bureau diving into all things scams and more. So you can text your question in. All right, so this person, um, this is a very interesting situation. My 20 something year old daughter found a job on Indeed. We've talked a little bit about job scams on Indeed. So that will be the second part of this question. But she says the employer wants her to meet in the lobby of the Corey Convention Center for orientation. She's supposed to meet him at midnight and a shuttle van is supposed to take them to the job site. The job pays like $25 an hour. Well, how does this sound to you? That sounds very sketchy to me. If you could take a couple of steps, I would say call the Corey Convention Center and see if this is a usual practice for the company. If they normally have new hires come and meet at midnight, I mean, the job itself may be an overnight job. It might start at midnight, but having orientation at midnight sounds a little sketchy. Um, I mean, there's a lot of alarm bells going off here. For it makes sure. me think that your daughter's going to end up on a true crime podcast. Um, I mean, $25 an hour is a great salary, but there's, there's just a lot of things wrong with this picture. I would say she needs to be investigating the company as well. Um, you know, this is possibly they've used the name of a real company to offer this position. So she could, and this kind of gets into, you know, um, how to check out a, jo a job to make sure it's real so that you don't fall victim to an employment scam. But she should call the company, check with HR, make sure that this is a real job that she has been hired for. And that could help allay some of the fears with this, but um, uh, there's there's a lot of sketchy things with this position. So I know beforehand, that makes me think about this. You've told people before, if they're uh, unsure whether the job is real or not, to ask for a FaceTime with the HR department or the boss or whatever. And if they can't figure out how to do the FaceTime or the Zoom or something like that, then that is a big red flag of this is not real. Yeah, I mean, in this day and age, you're not going to be hired over an app or over chat. You're going to be hired at least by FaceTime interview or a Zoom interview. People want to meet who they're going to be hiring in some form or fashion. So if you have, have been hired without some sort of face-to-face -face interview, that's a huge red flag. And some other red flags are being hired immediately. Um, that's a red flag. Even though you could be the most qualified person in the world, they're not going to just, you know, look at your resume and say you're hired. Those are some other red flags as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. This next uh, one kind of talks about the whole thing about debit and uh, bank accounts. I was scammed out of $1,000. My bank called it forgery, but they're refusing to give back the money. The Consumer Protection Agency responded to my complaint, but in the end, I don't have my money. Is all hope lost? That's a very interesting situation. I would like to know more. Um, it's, you know, I mean, the bank does have the final determining mm -hmm. determination. I mean, they did call it forgery, um, but then for some reason we're not, we don't have all of the details to know why they then said no, but we're not gonna give you your money back. And the Consumer Protection Agency, you know, I'd be curious to see some more of the information. This is probably a good case where they could write into Two Wants to Know to mm -hmm. call for action and they could look more into the situation. You could also maybe file a complaint with BBB and we could look to see why the bank didn't, you know, go ahead and say, yes, we'll give your money back, even though they determined it was a forgery. So there are, I think there's a couple avenues you could go with. Yeah, uh, for sure. Let's, uh, let's see what kind of paperwork you have so we can figure out what actually happened there for this one. Uh, the next question is, can artificial intelligence services like ChatGPT be used to scam us? Unfortunately, yes. Um, AI is going to make scammers even more, even better at their jobs. That's kind of one of the things that we're starting to see is, you know, we've said the red flags can be bad grammar, um, language sound, sounding kind of stilted, and we're already starting to see that scammers are using AI to make their text and their emails and even website language sound much more realistic and, and much more personable. So that's one way we're already seeing um, scammers use AI. And then of course you're, you're hearing the stories where they're using voice um, scams 
whether it's using your own voice, using your boss's voice, or using children's voices or, or another relative's voice to scam people out of money. I mean, all it takes is a few little clips of what you've posted on social media for them to get the voice and be able to replicate it. So yes, unfortunately, um, there are gonna be nefarious uses by scammers of AI. I know, my family and I, we've talked about this and I'm like, we just need a code word so you'll be able to know is this really me or not? And text people, even if you're on the phone and they say that it's them, you text them to see. Absolutely, that's great advice. I think both of those things are good. Have a code word and also never believe that it's the person on the phone or in a text or in an email. Because I mean, this is gonna be used for all kinds of scams. I mean, there's always the, you know, the, the text that people send to say, I'm in trouble right. or I'm at the store, can you send me money? I mean, there's all kinds of iterations out there. So uh, when you get something like that, immediately call them or text them and say, is it really you? Mm -hmm. And that'll prevent you from falling for one of these scams because people lose thousands of dollars to for this. Sure.